of Dora. Welcome to Torah Talk, a Torah Institute podcast. Torah just means instruction in Hebrew. At Torah Talk, we will make straight the ways of Yahuwah and discuss the simple truths of Scripture so that even you can understand and get all the juicy life hidden within the pages of Yahuwah's Torah. Welcome to Torah Talk with Lou White and Mark Davidson. <laughs> Am I there? There you go. There I am. Okay. (laughs) Well, good morning. Good morning, mate. How are you? Please. Hey, Mark. What? Hello, sister. How are you going? Hey, I'm fine. I I got your message. I just couldn't get to the phone in time to answer your call. That's all right. Have your clock's been changed forward or backwards or something? Uh, No, he said our clock was changed forward or backward or something. They did change it last weekend. And uh, uh, let me turn your microphone up. So, hey. eight, so eight a.m. for you now is uh, is now, is it? It's uh, eight o'clock. Yeah, or eight o four. Is it making it even later for him now? Is it making it even later? Yeah, we're hitting midnight now. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's no, not good. No, I just no, I didn't know. That's all. Oh, I see. So you were calling? I was calling an hour ago. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah. And then after about yeah. 20, and after about twenty minutes, I got concerned. I thought, "Ah, what happened?" <laughs> yes. What well, they did make us do that funny thing, and that messes people up. <clears throat> well, well, anyway, we have to do that too. Yeah. Well, I haven't met someone that likes that. No. So, uh, Isn't it hideous? Uh huh. <laughs> Where are we today? There's beautiful pools behind us today. We're in Bali. Oh. And uh, it's just absolutely stunning. There's little huts right on the water. Wow. And uh, the swimming pool is just uh, just gorgeous. So, Tour yeah, Institute Bali. has sent us to Bali. I like Bali. Yeah. I went to Bali on my honeymoon. I like Bali. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Well, you got a refill. Yes, I, I it's my second cup. Yeah. Second cup of coffee. We're coffee people. Are you coffee people down in Australia? Uh, no. Uh, a lot of people are, but um, that's but, the most dangerous thing that I do is drink caffeine. I don't yeah. drink it in anything but you know usually uh, coffee or tea. Most people here love coffee. Love coffee. Uh, I never, so, I never do you're a liking to it. Drink. You drink what? What do you drink mainly? I um well I'm detoxing, so I drink water. <laughs> but right, right. I used to be addicted to uh, to Coca Cola. That's where I got my caffeine from. So oh, that's uh, I'm detoxing <clears throat> everything. So it's been a lot that's of head, a lot of headaches this week. But, you so, have to drink lots of water, yeah, yes. when you're detoxing. Mm. Yes. Yeah, my I've wife, done that. My wife's it's, hammering it's, me all the time. Drink water. Drink water. Uh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Funnily enough, though, uh, we have a lot of coffee plantations down here, and a lot of my clients who come in say, we went to the United States, but make sure you take your own coffee because the coffee over there tastes like dishwater. And I went, oh, I'll have to tell Lou about that. So when you come down here, apparently, I don't drink coffee, I wouldn't know, the coffee is just phenomenal. Oh. People well, my coffee. Yeah. Adam and myself really like a good stiff cup of coffee where your spoon will just stand up in it. <laughs> you know, that's just a joke. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm seeing something back in the background there that's that's kind of peeking up, saying hello. Yes. It looks like a little six string. Well, it's a little it's strict, similar. It's a little it looks six similar. string. It's a little yes. six string. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let me see. You want to have a bit of a jam? What? Not? Let's see, this is a uh, this is a Yamaha. Yeah. See, beautiful. Well, this is a a Maiten. 
Oh, a Martin. Maiton. A Ma Maiton. Australian. Wow. Yeah. So. Of course, we're not. We're not. That looks like a serious guitar. Uh, mm. well, I've been told it is. This know. is a running about um, usually a wholesale about a hundred fifty, maybe. You yeah. know. Fantastic. It's Beautiful. not really expensive. You know. Where, where, what's your What's your A four forty sound like? <laughs> I can give you an E. I'm pretty basic here. Oh, you don't know where. Are we in tune? Oh, that's your. Ooh. I okay. It to, I tune it to the keyboard. I uh, tune it to my ear, but I tune it to a D. I don't tune it to an E. Oh, you tune it to a D. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, <clears throat> it's to relax the strings. It it isn't such a stress on the neck and the and the bridge, and uh, tuning it to a D, it's just lowering it a little bit. So instead of having over 500 pounds of pressure, it probably reduces it by, uh, you know, 80 or so. And you just have to play all your chords up and up. And... I, I will transpose everything up two frets. That's all. <laughs> it's not a problem. That's serious stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's serious musicians, man. Yeah. Wow, that's... I don't, That's know, really I don't know if we could jam anyway because we um, there's a bit of a delay. <laughs> That's true. Yes. Yeah. yeah. People would be uh, horrified and ter terrified and torrified. And... <laughs> yeah. yeah. We don't want to torrify anybody, you know. But that song you sent through this week was brilliant. Oh, it was beautiful. The Young Bloods. It's yeah. uh, sort of uh, their main thing. I mean, they had a couple other hits, but. That was just such a beautiful song. Yeah. And of course, they were throwing all kinds of terrible things in on the video on YouTube, but um, somebody did. Yeah. They were throwing all this mixed religious stuff in. Yeah. But uh, it, it, in its pure lyrical form, it's just fine. Yeah. Well, for anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, I managed to learn the chorus. Um. <laughs> Come on, Scared. people, now. Smile on your brother, everybody get together, try and love one another right now. Come on, people now, smile on your brother, everybody get together, try and love one another right now. Try and love one another right now. That's all I've got so far. Oh, I love it. Yeah. It's so... That's Lou's, ne that's Lou's <laughs> next uh, transformation of an old song. It's beautiful. We're going to be working on that soon. That's wonderful. Well, it's not my transformation. I think the song, the lyrics are just what they need to be. Yeah. What was that second line? Uh, Fear is how we die. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of verses there, isn't there? I enjoyed those. So you didn't change any of those? No. Oh, okay. That is as it is. You know, it's... Uh, you know, and uh, a lot of people uh, downplay the, the hippies today, and I'm sorry that they're combining that with the Occupy people, but they're not they're not hippies. You know, mm. hippies were about love and peace, mm. not uh, meanness and anger and all that, you know. Yeah. I was not a hippie, but I identified with uh, at least the hippies that I interpreted, but they were very, they weren't as dirty as people said. Now the Woodstock thing, there were horrible things going on there. Yeah, yeah. that that was more like the occupiers, you know. What are occupiers? Well, that's the new term that's just emerged, and it's not that all the occupiers are, uh, you know, misguided, but there's a whole lot of them that are mixed in there that are, and you know, it's a mixed muddled group of people who are not only in this country but all over in other cities are uh, occupying the streets and protesting with signs uh, in basically a statement that they are really disgruntled about the inequity of uh, the economy with relative to the masses and the real rich people and the real rich people are being uh, sent a message. That's basically what I'm getting from it. But their message is a little unclear. I think they want people to just redistribute the wealth 
of all the billionaires and the multimillionaires, mm -hmm. and so that everybody will just have everything they need. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, sort of a socialism thing, you know, which isn't uh, scripturally so evil, really, mm -hmm. but uh, it isn't. Uh, we're not supposed to steal. Yeah. You know, we're not supposed to steal. So uh, we have, if a person is uh, greedy, and you know, Yahusha said. It's difficult for a rich man to get into the kingdom of heaven. And that's because they put their love in the wrong area. And they put it in, they put their trust in their means of, you know, living, their high level of living and their possessions, and they love their things. And that's what, you know, Yahushua was telling the rich young man who asked how he could how he could acquire eternal life or everlasting life. And Yahushua said, there is one thing you lack, because <laughs> he had that love for his treasure, and his treasure was in the wrong place, you know. You can be rich. I mean, Eo was rich, you know, and of course, uh, uh, our Abraham was rich, yeah. and many people have been, but you can be a, a kind, um, sharing, giving person. To those who are in need so you know giving to the poor is 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 to be done by everybody that has the means but uh yeah the occupiers that's what they're called you know with all the protesting signs and marches and things that are going on it's really sad that nobody has any torah understanding and they actually believe they can make a difference they actually think they can make this world a better place they they think that they can Recycle, <laughs> you know, save the planet. They, they mm -hmm. just, it's sad because you just look at it and go, there's no save in this world. It's on its way down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny though, but I, as we talked about in other uh, phone calls here, we, uh, or video calls, the recycling is, is okay. That's fine. But, you know, when you de have a biodegradable object, it doesn't. It it takes its large piece or chunk, and it becomes billions of smaller pieces, and it breaks down into its constituent pieces or components, and it becomes a billion problems instead of just one. All you have to do is pick it up, take it somewhere, and throw it away, and it's gone. But you see, people are throwing their mess out the windows and cigarette butts and things along the highways and. It's really trashy. Wow. <laughs> you know. It's the uh, 11th of the 11th of the 11th today. Well, if it's, uh, that's the Roman date. And we oh, know yeah, that that's Roman date. Yeah. Yeah. A client told me that today. I, I, uh, that, mm. uh, she said, it's good luck today. <laughs> I said, oh. oh, is it? <laughs> oh, dear. Well, you know, I wanted to point out, though, uh, in my email to you. Did you get my email uh, last night? Yes. Yes, I did. Okay, saying that I was on. Um, it's, you're from the future. Because yeah. you see, on my calendar on my computer says 11 10 yeah. 2011. So you're past midnight. Okay. okay. And we won't keep you. I, 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 Phyllis was saying I need to be uh, about 45 minutes. So. That's fine. You know, that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Because okay. we've got a we've got a stricter program to run now too. Because we're on the radio and they want to the little. Uh, I sent you a few emails this week. I don't think they got through. That's, yes, they did. They did. Uh -huh. Oh, great. They did. Yeah, the last one that I didn't get. It might have been a file that was too big or something. Uh, yeah, they sent through all the little. They're, they're cleaning up their radio station and they require this and that from all the guests shows so yeah but uh, i can add those bits in later on so that's fine we can just free flow <laughs> all right all right so is that all the family in bed now yeah for a few hours now because of, we're doing this different diet so they're all uh, detoxing as well really and they're Ooh. calming down a bit that's lovely yeah that's good so trying to get healthy I can keep up with them all. Mm. Did, did you see the email that I just sent out 
about the uh, Samaritans? Yes, I did. That was really interesting. You kind of sort of put it all together, what you've been saying the last few shows mm -hmm. about the what the, the Phoenicians and the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, misunderstandings about that. People hear these words, Samaritan and, uh, you know, Jew. Uh, they just don't know really the, the, the entire picture. I had an email from a brother come in yesterday, and Brother Bill, and he has his own YouTube things. And he asked me this question, and uh, it sounded like he needed a, a little more information about the Samaritans. Of course, the Samaritans in Yahushua's time had been mixed together with Assyrians and other captive peoples that the Assyrians attacked because, you know, in 722, basically, the uh, northern tribes were mostly driven away over the decades of attacks. But uh, the ones that remained were, you know, uh, kind of replaced. The, the only people that were really unaffected were the people in the farming areas and the wide open spaces because they, the Assyrians really didn't want to take everybody out because if you did, then, you know, the place would become overrun by wild beasts. Apparently, wild beasts were a real problem and a terror back then. Mm. You know, uh, you know, here we have a zoo escape or something occasionally. Uh, you know, somebody will say, the lions are out. How'd that happen? And the, there'll be lions or tigers or some big cats or bears roaming the streets and uh, of course they shoot them on sight but uh usually and there was a huge uh animal reserve that uh had dozens of really dangerous animals that uh the owner apparently committed suicide a few weeks ago and uh, and just before he did he opened up all the ca the cages and released the animals into the population and uh, his wife uh, was just blown away. But uh, they did have to shoot some 50 animals or so, you know. Oh, but uh, back in the days of, you know, the, in, you know, the scriptures, when the Samaritans were uh, in the land, and uh, the Samaritans were the northern ten tribes, generally known, you know, and they were uh, apparently, uh, everybody had to watch the animal situation because apparently they would encroach on the civilized areas and just overtake them now down in florida and i'm sure down there uh, some to some extent and uh, certainly in, in india and uh, indonesia places like that there's probably a lot of wild crocodiles and alligators yeah that are that'll just come in snakes that'll just come up into the even the second floor you know there were these rains in the monsoons over there in, uh, I forget the city. I think it's Bangkok, Thailand. They're having horrible monsoons for the last couple of months. Yeah. And they're expecting another few weeks of monsoon. And I was chatting with uh, one of my suppliers who happens to live there. He sells posters. And uh, he works for a company called Pyramid America. And he lives in Bangkok. And he said that, he has to be on the second floor and keep the doors closed because the snakes will just come right up. And uh, Whoa. <laughs> yeah, and alligators and things, crocodiles or whatever. Oh, dear. <laughs> Hide your children. Hide your husbands. Yeah. Oh, dear. Well, yeah, well speaking of the scattered tribes, I got an email from uh, another believer this week. And it was the first time he'd emailed me just to say hello. And I think it was through Facebook. And he, one of his hobbies is to look, is looking at the, the different tartans of, of uh, clans of, and apparently Davidson is a Scottish, it has a Scottish tartan of its own. So he's going, which, which one are you? And I wrote back and said, well, I have no idea, mate. I said, I've never even looked into it, I think way back somewhere we're Scottish, but I've never looked at what my specific tartan is. And uh, anyway, there was a link there and I clicked on it. And there's all these Davidson tartans, you know, and I thought, oh, wow. What am I gonna, well, I gotta wear a dress to work. <laughs> so, oh. So, oh dear. That was well, interesting. You know, 
the Vikings were all over, and uh, that's what we were see. When you say Phoenician, or when you say Viking, especially yeah. the Vikings, when you when you see the boats, the boats that Shlomo or Solomon would dispatch into the world uh, when the kingdom was united, the points, the harbors like Yapa or Joppa, as they call it now. They uh, would send out these ships from these various port cities along Israel's coast. And that's where, um, I'm sleepy now, come on. <laughs> uh, Yonah uh, caught his ship that was headed to Tarshish. You know, when he was told to go to Nineveh, he just goes in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And he was getting on, on the Mediterranean to go to Tarshish in what was then Iberia, you know, or southern Spain. Iberia, by the way, comes from the name Eber, you know, Abraham's great-great-great-grandfather. Mm. Anyway, Hibernia was up there around where the Vikings were. Of course, Vikings were in the Mediterranean too. But the ships, though, had these huge beasts for bows where the distant, the distant viewing of those would look like there was a sea creature out there. So it would scare these Greeks and Romans from going out near it. And they wanted to keep people away from it. But those ships were very large, and they could actually hold a great deal of cargo. And that's what their whole purpose was, because they were trading along the coastal areas of the world. And it would take three, three and a half years for them to go and circumnavigate the earth or go to their ports and pick up their treasures and, and bring back. they take supplies and then bring back uh, the treasures, the copper, the gold, the iron, whatever, and the tin or whatever they were mining in those facilities. <clears throat> anyway, the ships were disguised as huge beasts. And of course, that's where the Vikings come in. And uh, heavily armed, you know, to defend their treasures, you know, because they had gold and silver and all those precious metals and no doubt gems. So naturally the Vikings would be viewed as angry, horned, helmeted, uh, heavily armed dudes because they were dispatching huge loads of uh, treasure. And uh, they had shields on the sides of their ship because it, it was a warship basically to defend what their contents were. But when these ships, these huge ships needed to uh, carry the northern tribes out of the land because of the drought during the days of Eliam, then, or Eliyahu is probably more accurate, uh, they, they would be able to hold literally hundreds of people, their families, because they were, they, were, they were dying. There was nothing to eat. There was nothing to drink. So they said, we're out of here. So they go to the, you know, the colonies. And they loaded these ships up that were formerly used for you know, cargo with the families. And uh, in the email, I mentioned that Carthage in Northern Africa swelled to over a million people. And there were huge granaries there. You know, they, they farmed the land there. So they went right to work farming, you know, without any government uh, interference or corporation uh, genetic modification. <laughs> they had seeds. Mm -hmm. And they're all worried about it now. What are you growing there? You have to buy your seed from us. It has to be our special seed, too. You know, that won't produce and produce and produce, you know. We're living in a fallen world, and, I, you know, the powers that be are really harming us. Yeah. Yeah, they, they're onto that in this country, too. When you're flying in and out of the country, you, you, could, you could bring whatever you want, but just don't bring any fruit. <laughs> it's like, okay. Right. Yeah, they'll say that it's for some other reason, but it really is that they want to have complete control over the food supply. Yeah. They don't want anybody going out planning what they want and living off that, you know. So, uh, yeah, you know, I was going to say, I've never told you this, I don't think, but my firstborn son, who's, um, let's see, he's going on 29 now, and uh, he looks almost exactly like you. He, he wears his hair very in a similar way. He has the same build, you know, everything. It's amazing. His name is Michael. Yeah. And, my, build's, uh, my build's coming down now. <laughs> excellent. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're entering into the winter now. So, you know, you're going into the spring, well, the summer. 
summer, and it's going to be uh, easy for you to find a way to lose weight. Anyway, what, what were you going to say about Michael? Oh, I was just going to say that Michael has a, you know, he's about 6'1", maybe 6'2". I think he's tending more towards 6'2". Yeah. What, what is your height? I don't know about feet. Um, I'm about 175 centimeters. I'm pretty short. <laughs> 175 centimeters. Yeah. Is that a leprechaun? What is? Could probably. Yeah. All my, all my mates up north call me a hobbit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They've got big feet, big hairy feet. They call me a hobbit. <laughs> well, I've been getting the short jokes for 20 years now. It doesn't bother me. Uh, so, anyway, but anyway, you look, you look a lot like my son Michael. It's amazing, you know. Mm. You know the same color hair, everything. Yeah. How's he doing? He's doing fine, and mm. he's got he has three children, mm. and they're awesome. You should, I should send you pictures of them. Yeah. Uh, Eli mm. Eliyahu or Elijah, and Elena and Ethan. So the girl is in the middle, and she's. Got a, a younger brother and an older brother, yeah. and they are such good children, you know. Yeah. And they're learning Torah. If you walked up to them and and said, uh, "What's the ten, what are the Ten Commandments?" You know, they'll rattle them off for you. Yeah, and that's good. Yeah. Mm. And they stay with us some nights, and uh, we uh, have them stay in their in their bedrooms, yeah. and because uh, we keep two bedrooms for them, you know, yeah. because they visit pretty regularly. And uh, we'll take them to school in the morning, and Phyllis will be driving into to the school, and uh, they go to a Christian school, you know, like similar to your children, you know. Yeah. We pulled ours out, actually. Yeah. Oh, really? A couple, what was of, a couple of months ago, we uh, couldn't handle the hustle bustle and the, uh, the morning and the afternoons and all the madness of it, and they were just... We didn't like the teach. Well, obviously, we didn't like the teachings. But Amy's always wanted to homeschool for many, many years. And uh, every day she'd send Josiah off to school. She was really upset, and uh, it was uh, just didn't seem to be working. So we we pulled them out, and uh, they're having a wonderful time now. So oh, was, good. And she realised she realised just how how lovely it is to be doing it the way she wants now. So it was a good experience to have. Just to see what it would be like, <laughs> but uh, it sounds very thing. similar to our our situation when we did that. We put our first boy, our Michael, into a Christian school at that time, and uh, he was basically fine. We had him trained and and taught the truth, and of course he would share the truth with little chums that he had, little friends, and the thing of it is, one of the little boys that he told the truth to went home and told their parents that such, such and such was the truth. I forget the details. The parents got really upset and called up to school and said, what are you teaching my child? You know, it was about something or other. Uh, I forget the Sabbath or Pam or you know, whatever. And they said that they looked in the scriptures and they found that they couldn't really prove what they were believing was true, but they didn't want their child exposed to whatever was going on and they tra they traced it to my son and of course he was uh, at they had a meeting with us and they said that because Michael would have to sit by himself because everybody else was eating ham and they they just couldn't abide him being in the school and I said well that's very sad because when Daniel was in Babylon and he requested from the chief of eunuchs if he might just eat vegetables because the meat was not kosher and so forth, then uh, he was, even the Babylonians accepted that. <laughs> you know. Mm. But you won't, you know, that is so odd. Mm. But uh, that's that was the beginning of uh, our homeschooling experiences. And so we homeschooled our two sons. And they've done real well, you know. We just didn't want to get them. It's all about the behavior, really, and uh, all the. We found his behavior just changed in a week. He'd just come home. He'd be so rude and talking back and all these things. And just from being up with all the other kids, 
Whereas when they go out with the, there's a lot of, where we live around here, there's a lot of other kids that are homeschooled as well and they go out on picnics and things during the day and they're a lot more lovely people and love, you know, they're not so rude and they're, they, um, their behaviour just doesn't alter as much, you know. And so we thought, <laughs> you can't protect the children forever, but we thought, well, it's, it's nice to be able to try while they're still young, you know. Yeah, we had the same experience, and there were other homeschooled parents and their children, and we would have little get-togethers at, at various th uh, events, and that was really amazing, the difference that we saw as well. Yeah. And their achievements, academically, were also superior. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're just a very different mindset. They're used to doing things sort of more relaxed, more natural, or, you know, they're, they're teaching their own kids, they're... It's all sort of just free learning and it's not as strict and rigid and taking tests and all these things and you know mm -hmm. it's not, I think they're just teaching kids to take all these tests and there's no common sense kids come up grow up with no common sense and they you know I'm just going to teach all my sons how to cut hair and then if they want to do something else in the future they can but at least they'll have something to fall back on you know exactly um, mm. yeah so as soon as they're old enough to sweep, they can come and sweep hair. So. Well, that's the beginning. They have to sweep the floor first yeah. because cleanliness is important. And then uh, just, you know, I, I, I've been able to cut hair myself, too. I, uh, in fact, uh, quite often will work on my own and, and tinker with my children's hair. And yeah. Of course, they're grown men now, but... Uh, you know, and they look great. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it wouldn't look as good, but sometimes it would be so awesome that uh, Phyllis would go, "Who are you?" <laughs> I don't recognize you. But uh, when Adam was a young boy, we didn't cut his hair at all for many, many years. Oh, and his hair, it was beautiful. Yeah. His hair was like a sun sunrise, and it was he was all it was curly and it was orange. You know, it wasn't. I mean, they call it red. But when the sunlight would hit it, these golden out outlines would shine from his head. And women in groceries or other stores would pass by him and go, oh, you know, I just take their breath away. <laughs> you know. And uh, anyway, you just, eventually. It you just there. loved taking him to the grocery store, didn't you? <laughs> it was great, yeah. yeah. And uh a lot of the Hebrew, uh, well, the Jewish families would identify him as, oh, it's, what's his last name? You know, they'd say, because they'd recognize that. And, you know, I, I like to finally think of uh, King Daoud, or D David, as having some similar appearance, in, you know, to him. But, uh, you know, it was magnificent. And not long ago, he let his hair go for a couple of years, you know, about... Uh, a year or so ago, he cut it again, but he let it really go, and it was just, you know, amazing. Of course, being a child of the 60s, I don't mind long hair. <clears throat> of course, you know, the long-haired music, of course, everybody identifies Mozart, Beethoven, and all these wonderful uh, composers as being long hairs, because they were long hairs. And uh, Yahusha's hair was no doubt very long. Uh, the only ones that really had to cut their hair, I've got a, an article about hair on my website. I don't know if you've seen it. It's just fossilized customs forward slash hair, you know, dot HTML. Anyway, it talks about hair and the interpretation of the verse. I think it's in, uh, oh, it, it, is, it, uh, is it Leviticus 16 or Deuteronomy 22 or something? Uh, but anyway, the thing of it is, the subject of hair is uh, addressed, and whether we're to damage the edges or the corners of our beards and all that, and what those words mean in Hebrew, I analyzed that very carefully. And uh, we're not allowed to cause the sides of our hair to curl. You know, it's it, the actual word is curl. And that's what they're doing. They're doing the exact thing that they're told not to do, you know, in the, in the land of Israel. It's uh, phenomenal. So you're saying we shouldn't be letting your hair grow long? 
No, it, it, he he doesn't have an uh, Yahua doesn't have any ordinance about letting your hair grow long. You shouldn't let He's, it curl. For Levitical priests, you're yeah. not to let that happen. Only they had to have. You could cut your hair anytime you want if, if you were just a regular, uh, you know, Israelite, like a like a Reubenite or a Yehuda or any of the tribes. But if you were a Levitical priest, at during the time of your priestly duties, your hair had to be a certain. Your beard and your hair had to be had to be trimmed, not off, not gone, but well kept. And you even had to have your your bonnet on, which was hair control, because you see they worked with. Uh, well, they were doctors, they were uh, chefs, they were butchers, and and Yehuda didn't want unkept people just looking like uh, hairy monsters working with food and cleanliness. And they were they were, cleanliness was one of the things that they had to, you know, they had to be well bathed. Their clothes had to be clean. They had to be made of a certain thing, and they were white. You know, they were basically like doctors, you know. So if you walked into a, what you know, the men with the white coats, you know, that's what they would be, you know. Uh, there was a big thing of water there in the tabernacle, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. They their hands in before they went into the most high place or something. Yes. So, uh, yeah, there's uh, there's an article that I, uh, I, I could probably get it... Uh, get it up here if I uh, push this button and uh, just go to hair.html it's uh, fossilized customs forward slash h-a-i-r dot h-t-m-l and let's see yes now let me just put in the hair part And no, that says hall. We don't want to go to that hall. Here we go. We want to go to that hair. There is a hall on there. <laughs> there it is, hair. Yeah. Yeah. Hair on the head and beard. Now let's see. Uh, it's Leviticus ten. Okay. That's the that's one of the places. Verse six says, "Then Moshe and said to Aharon and his sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, do not let your hair become unkempt, and do not tear your clothes, or you will die, and Yahuwah will be angry with the whole community." So the Luwite priests were not to tear their clothes, nor were they to allow their hair to be unkempt. And now unkempt. Is a is a word that you have to look up, you know. And then there's the uh, word uh, in Leviticus 19. I was correct. Uh, yeah, 19 verse 27. There's three words or so that really mean a lot, but there's actually more than that. Do not cut. That's the Hebrew word that means nakaf. But here's the real word. It's it, it, the word cut is actually nakaf, and it means to encircle. Or curl. Do not curl the hair at the sides, the pia, the sides of your head. Do not curl the sides of your head. Or clip off, shakath, that means to lay waste. That's the real word cut. The edges of the side of your beard. In other words, to make bald spots on your face. You know, and that's Leviticus 19, verse 27. But uh, that's just exactly what they do. On the sides of their head, they are curling their hair. See, the word nakaf is, has a root word, kuf, or, uh, no, wait a minute, it's uh, not kuf, it's uh, the word for circle, you know, is uh, kadur, yeah. kuh. So the, the, the kof is a letter that is a root word. Or, or a root idea, it's a component, and it means something that's round, you know. So that's what they do. They rounded or curled the sides of their head, and that's what they're doing now. Well, we're not to condemn them for it. They just have misunderstood, 
they've misunderstood many things, but, uh, you know, as we return, we have to be very careful that we do not uh, cause division because Yahushua is trying to engraft or put us back together into one stick, not make us angry with each other. When you said that uh, the rest of the nation could do whatever they wanted with their hair. Oh, yeah. Are we applying to that rule or are we applying to the rule of the Lou White and the medical priests? Well, that's a good question because, see, we're of the priestly uh, order ourselves being Melchizedek. Mm. The, uh, the ordinance would have been applying to the time that they're in their, in their priestly duties themselves when they're do, handling the food, doing the butchering, and healing the people of their diseases. Uh, now, we're doing that. We're, we're clean all the time because of the blood of Messiah. But we should be clean people and we should be orderly in our mind and in our body uh, we're not supposed to look necessarily like Wookiees you know <laughs> or Sasquatch hmm. here comes here comes one of those Nazarene looks like a Bigfoot <laughs> no we should look orderly and uh, not uh, you know just hair flying all over the place like a you know a wild man but uh, that can be a technique in battle. That's what the a lot some of the Norse like. I think it was the Picts that were wild northern tribe that uh, would smear mud all over their bodies and get their hair sticking out, and they'd run into battle naked with a spear. And one of them would jump on a spear, and the one behind them would kill the soldier. Uh, they were very uh, ruthless. Barbarians is what they call them, and that's really the word barbarian literally means a, a bearded Aryan, and a barbarian. <laughs> bar, bar means hair. Of course, you know that. You're a, you're a, a hair, hair person. Okay. Barb, a barber. A barber. Mm. Has to do with hair, barb. Yeah. You know. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. So you've got a, 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 a website to look at. Have you ever looked at this web page? It's uh, called Hair. Hair, yeah, I have. We went through it in our um, study group uh, a couple of years ago when we were just going through, slowly going through your articles. And I went ahead and talked about Absalom, or Absalom, you know, Daoud's or David's son, yeah. who had long hair. And occasionally he would have it cut. So people that say, oh, you can't cut your hair. There's a lot of uh, cases in the scriptures where you can, you know, find examples of people cutting their hair. But the side curls are actually specifically forbidden. They're, but yet they're practiced mm. as a form of piousness. And it's a defiance of the actual words themselves. Yeah. Do put the side curls on your head. That's what he's saying, basically, in uh, Leviticus 19, verse 27. Mm. But they, they use the word cut in one sense, but, but it doesn't mean cut. It means uh, to encircle or curl or round. That's what it means, to go around. Oh. It doesn't cut. Now, there is the word cut in there. It means to lay waste the edges, and that's the word nakach or shakath. Oh. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, they make a big deal about hair, don't they, a lot of people? Yeah, they judge one another over a lot of things, yeah. you know. Mm. We probably need to lighten up a little bit and love one another. Yes, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we don't put that's... bald places on our head. It's not bit. recommended. No. no, in fact, it specifically says don't do it. And, of course, people that say, well, that's for that, that's for them. Now, now we have refrigeration. Or... <laughs> You know, or uh, we don't keep the Sabbath anymore. Well, wh what are you calling it about? You just said it's the Sabbath. Why are you calling it that? You know, so, and I was listening on the radio as I was driving home from that shop yet last night, and the preacher that I listened to on the radio was a Christian, a lovely man, had a wonderful message. In fact, I, I practically, he was bringing tears to my eyes because of the, the message and it was powerful uh, and I don't and I'm sure that uh, you know 
he was off on some things, but the things that he was, I don't mean to criticize him, but the, um, the teachings are basically, he was, he mentioned the Sabbath and he called it the Sabbath. You know, he was reading the scripture text, you know, from the, from the scriptures. And then he turned right around and in the, practically the same breath. Um, and you know, just said, we don't have to worry about legalism. And yet that's, you know, and Yahushua was, uh, he was describing a case where Yahushua had healed someone on the Sabbath. And that love countermanded that. It over, overwhelmed that commandment. Not that it was, it was evil or anything. It was just that he healed somebody on the Sabbath. And he was the master. He is the master of the Sabbath. He said so. He's the master of the Sabbath, not the master of the first day of the week. And so, you know, when they talk about it, they call it the Sabbath. And they read the text that says the Sabbath. And then they turn right around and say, well, we don't have to obey that. You know, <laughs> it's just so amazing. It's a, it's a, dr it's a drunkenness, mm. you know. But if you, ask, like a, if, you ask yeah. them if, if, if you ask them if they would kill anybody or steal, oh, no, 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 no. no. Respect mm. your parents. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got to do all that. But no. Well, that's legalism if you don't kill people. <laughs> yeah. If you're not going to steal that thing, somebody else will, you know. But the Sabbath, yeah, yeah, so don't have to do the Sabbath, no. As long yeah. as you're tired, tithing's still in there. Oh, yeah. What do you <laughs> think? <that? laughs> not to be legalistic, but you better get that buck in there. Send that money. Bring uh, it all into the storehouses. Was it Malachi or something? Bring it all into the storehouse? You know, and I think that applies when Yahushua was talking about the temple that makes the gold set apart. He was saying that you don't have to keep your vow um, if you swear by the temple, but you do have to keep your vow if you swear by the gold that was placed in the temple. So, uh, in other words, their priorities were all messed up, you know, and that's what he was really talking about. If we extend the, uh, the teachings to all the things that they, that they would apply to. Yeah. You know. Yeah, totally. So if he blessed the seventh day and set it apart, because on that day he rested, and Hebrews four corroborates that and says there is, there remains a Sabbath, you know, and and it says and it even mentions to enter into his rest, his rest, you know, that would be identifying with his rest, mm -hmm. and then. They, they just say, well, our rest is in Yahushua now. Well, <clears throat> it doesn't say that. But we know that Yahushua is enabling us to, to love the commandments. You know, because in our flesh we wouldn't. You know, we would see things from our perspective only. Instead of letting him indwell us and, and let us see things as he sees them. You know, and share his mind with us. You know. The mind of the spirit, you know. Yeah, when we first learned about the Sabbath, we thought, oh, yeah, that's great, that's great. And we, we did it. We still went out to coffee shops and had <laughs> had, had little, you know, tatatays here and there. But then we, we came into it more seriously and realized, hey, we're not supposed to be going out of our homes. And then the real fire came because then you're in your home and you're like, I want to go out. I want to go out, you know. But now... So yeah, but now with all these kids and you, you grow up a bit, you're just like, oh, thank you, Yusha, for the Sabbath. I can shut the gate right before mm -hmm. the sunset. I can stay in my jammies all day. It's amazing. Yep. You just don't have to do anything. I can't understand people who think it's a burden. It's wonderful. Yeah, it is, especially just, for families. Don't do anything. You don't have to go anywhere. It's uh, not in the commandment to do that. It, it uh, a certain mistranslated word like mikra, you know, it doesn't kara is the root. It means to proclaim something, you know, and uh, it's a proclamation. But uh, the thing of it is, if you just read Exodus chapter sixteen in all the context, you'll find that you're not to go out of your place on the Sabbath, meaning your vicinity, you know. Because certainly nobody, nobody in the camp of Israel, they didn't all rush to go see the, Le the Levitical priests in the center of the camp. No. The time. 
Oh, well, Phyllis has just held up a sign. <laughs> Show me the sign. <laughs> well, it was just a little piece of paper. And it said, we've already gone 50 minutes. You know, yeah. so I guess we better wrap it up. Yeah, we'll wrap it up. Mm. Well, just saying on the Sabbath, we were, we were going through the second chapter of Fossilized this week in the study Great. group. We were Skyping up with Atherton and uh, was doing all the days of the week and all the pagan names. And then it came to the Sabbath. And one of the most amazing things you said was that by doing the Sabbath, you are proclaiming that Yahuwah is Elohim, really, because you're doing what he did. He works six days, he rests on the seventh. So you are acknowledging that he is, how did you say it? You're, oh. you're uh, acknowledging and you're, you're proclaiming by your activity of resting when he rested that he is creator because that's why the commandment was given. It was in the commandment itself, you know, because, and even says because. You who have created the heavens and the earth in six days, and on that Sabbath he rested, the seventh day, the seventh day, not not any day, but the seventh day. And that identifies us as acknowledging that he's the creator. And if we don't acknowledge that, it says in the in Revelation that we are to worship him that created the heavens and the earth and all the water. And and the, and so forth, and that is relating relating back to that commandment. I always saw that when I would read that in, in Revelation, that you are to worship Him that created the heavens and the earth, and the way you do that is by that one commandment, which is the covenant sign, the sign of the everlasting covenant, and an everlasting covenant would tend to be everlasting. Yeah, <laughs> you know. That's just a tendency that those everlasting covenants have. Mm -hmm. And the sign of an everlasting covenant would also be everlasting. Mm -hmm. And I was just reading uh, Yeshayahu, the Isaiah, chapter 66. I was quoting it in my head to my family. And it talked about that, uh, you know, also, you know, the Sabbath. And, that, and that's after, you know, and the... Uh, and then, of course, you've got tabernacles that's mentioned in Zechariah, you know, in the millennium, you know, and all these things that are just ignored right now, you know, like he put his commandments on hold and then re and then reinforce them later. You know, it's because the dragon is running the show is what it is. The circus is, you know, at the core of the circus, uh, what they call the C-H-U-R-C-H, you know, uh, the Nicolaitans. Are actually being led by the adversary in order to keep us defiled or the populations of the world um, and we're just a little flock just saying well we just want to obey the commandments can we just do that please and you know no <laughs> no oh no well the pastor that I uh, had a meeting with we chatted for about an hour or so and he's got one of these mega circuses or he's retired now but he comes and talks to them still a little bit. But I pray for him every single day. And he said, well, you can just pick one day out of seven. And I said, well, what if I just go ahead and pick the right one and just do that? Would that be okay? <laughs> and uh, he got real angry about that. I, I don't know. I wasn't being, you know, disrespectful or, or smart. I was just saying, well, I think I'll just do that. You know, I'll just pick the one that he, he chose. And, of course, now the adversary, uh, all the people in the world who are coming, the really the studious ones that are searching the scriptures diligently, like Bereans, and they're finding out, hey, you know what? There is the Sabbath in here. And they're seeing it that are in the Christian groups. And then they try to share that. And then they, they get, you know, all this flack from people. And uh, so they find themselves uh, out on their own, you know, and uh, they're, they're really, really wonderful people. And they're the first ones that come out. The, the ones that are really half-hearted and lukewarm, they just stay where they are. Yeah. But the ones that have a heart, that are their bones are burning with love for their creator, that are really committed. Those are the people who find the name and they find the Sabbath. Mm. Those are the first two things that they get, and they get it together, you know. And 
they go, wow, I'm so different now. And they just don't have anything in common with the other people other than the fact that they want to help them see the, see the light, you know, the Torah. That's so anyway. Amazing, brother. Hmm. Yeah, we want, we love them. You know, we don't hate them. And we're not trying to, you know, bash them with a mallet and say, you've got to see this. You know, well, we want them to see it, but we've got to love them, you know, and just say, it's not a threat, you know, to obey a command. Hmm. You know, which, I mean, yeah, like you were saying, uh, stealing and murdering or, you know, coveting or adultery, uh, you know, those are things that no one would want to do if they are Christian. But if you mention in most any case, the Sabbath, they say, well, that's, uh, you know, but you see, they're inoculated. They're, they're vaccinated against it. Almost every week they go and get their vaccination. And then they're, they feel like, oh, I feel better now, <laughs> you know, because they've been programmed. Go back to sleep, go back to sleep. And they're, and they're really just put to sleep with this uh, false idea. Someone is rewiring their alarm system every week going, well, let's see, you don't want that, you don't want that, you don't want that. You know, the original, you have to go back to the original wiring of the commandment because he wants, Yahushua brings the commandments to you and writes them a love for them on your heart. And instead of in stone, he said these, these laws will be in your heart. Not some new laws, but these laws. He says it, you know, yeah. and uh, I love that, you know. But uh, man is being led astray by masquerading messengers of light. Mm -hmm. They look like messengers of light, but they're actually masquerading, you know. Mm -hmm. And not that we're to hate them. They're, just, they're misguided people, you know. But the uh, dragon is the one that's doing it, really. You know, our enemy is not flesh and blood, you know. So we just have to find a way to love them enough to to go out there and change them. And of course, the first thing people want to do is, well, I've got to go find other people who understand. No, it doesn't say go out and find people who already know. It says go and teach and make a disciple, teach them the name and teach them the Torah. Everything that I commanded you, they are to also obey, you know? So it's very, very simple. And, uh, and then you, you, you have made a disciple, and then, the, then that disciple goes out and makes a disciple. Pretty soon, you're not so lonely. You know, you can be in a small community, and all you have to do is just be kind and show someone the scriptures and say, look at this. We're not supposed to eat pigs. And look, we're supposed to rest on this day. It's the Sabbath. And uh, he doesn't talk about anything anywhere else. And then challenge them and say, well, can you find something in here that says that the first day of the week is a day we're supposed to meet together or study or um, or, or worship? You know, we're supposed to worship every day, and worship is through obedience, because obedience is what true worship is. We're worshiping even in the middle of the night every day. We we are worshiping Yahuwah. It isn't that we have to go someplace to worship Him. You know, we worship Him by our obedience. You know, that was an amazing thing to understand coming out of the circus, yeah. coming out of all the worship leading mindset to realize that just by doing what he says, you are worshiping him. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that video that you put together was really amazing. It was an in-depth look into your heart and what you had, been, what you saw yourself as mm. and and, and then how everything's changed now. Mm. And uh, we're continuing to change. You know, every day, I, as I've said before, often I ask him to wash me of any defilement that might be in my heart where I put myself in front of his will. I want his will to be done and no one else's, not another dead guy's uh, like Constantine's will. Constantine's will is being done yeah. in most cases you know, with the Sabbath being thought of as Sunday. But, uh, you know, he's in fact the one that, you know, is the uh, origin. Well, if anybody looks up, you know, the uh, 
Edict of Constantine, they'll find out that in the year 321, Constantine set up Sunday as a day of rest. And it was not for the reason people think. It was for, it was in honor of the, of the sun, you know. And then, of course, uh, there were other edicts that he did, too. But, well, we're going to have to wrap it up, I'm afraid. But You're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. But let you, you need to go to bed and yeah. uh, get yeah. some rest. Yeah. Well, we should um, we should all pray for uh, Jason's dad because he's just dis discovered his uh, his whole body's riddled with cancer. So, um, our brother Jason up in uh, Mariba near Cairns. Oh. Okay. Um, so we should all pray for him and his dad. Okay. Jason's they dad. They don't know um, how long. I rang him just before, but I couldn't get through. We don't know how long. I was supposed to find out today. Maybe how long he's got. But uh, yeah. So. We'll, Keep you posted. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, we love you, and uh, I hope you get a good night's rest. Yeah, we'll do. Okay. Yeah. Love you guys. Okay. Well, we'll see you next. Uh, what? Uh, when are we going to get together? Oh, I don't know. We'll work it out. Okay. <laughs> love you, brother. Love you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Love now. you guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>